regular projects. When we pull up reg regular projects, we have our title, actual work, assumptions, benefits, deliverables, phase, project status. When we choose software projects, we have different fields. Title, actual work, customer support, uh, you know, project phase, status, and the user acceptance testing. And we have two different forms and one list. Hey everyone, this is my SharePoint questions and I am Andrew Hess. Today I'm going to touch a little bit on SharePoint and I wanted to show you how you could create two different forms but using the same list in SharePoint. So to do that we're going to use content types and I just wanted to go over what content types are a little bit. So let's, uh, let's use Google or Bing, right? If you're a Microsoft consultant you would want to use Bing. Well, let's say we do uh, content types, uh, SharePoint. Let's kind of look up about it. So what are SharePoint content types? Uh, they're reusable collections of metadata or, you know, columns that they can use to categorize, you know, items or documents. So let's go back to SharePoint. I'm in a SharePoint list. For most people, if they want to start creating a SharePoint list, right, They'd come in here and they'd add columns. That's the new way to do it. Uh, my old way to do it is I would go to list settings and then I would create columns here under the create columns menu. So that's uh, the two ways that you could create uh, you know, columns for your SharePoint list. Okay, so for our project list in SharePoint, let's say when we select new, we want two different forms. We're gonna have two different types of projects. We're going to have a software project and then a regular project. And some of the fields are going to be the same, but on each of the different types of projects, the fields are going to be different. So when we select new, we're going to have different fields here, depending on if we choose software project or just a regular project. And we want both of these in the same list. I don't want to create two different lists. A lot of people would just create two different lists and, and that's how they would do it. So, in order to do this, what we're going to do, instead of going to list settings or creating fields here, we're going to go to settings, site information, view all site settings, and right here we're going to go to site columns. Now, uh, some of your options may look different here depending on, you know, your permission levels or even if you're in a micro, if your SharePoint site is connected to a Microsoft team or if it's a 365 group site. But right here we have site columns and site content types. And we're gonna create some site columns. Now these site columns are associated with the site collection. So as you've been seeing, my site collection is called task list, right? That's my entire site collection. All the sites that make up this site collection are associated under task list. So I'm gonna go ahead and create some columns. So it's pretty much just like before, except for now we're creating them under the site. So let's do one like project phase uh, choice. So this is going to be under both. And as we do this, what we want to do is we want to um, be consistent and we want to organize the columns. So I'm going to put these under my SP questions. Now you can name your group whatever you'd want, but I'm just going to put them under my SP questions. And so this is a choice field. It's gonna be uh, initiate, plan, build, run, and close. Those are my phases of my project. And we'll say the default value is initiate. So we've created one site column. Let's go ahead and keep creating some more. So I'm gonna do project status. And we're just going to say uh, red, yellow, green. So for our choice field, we'll say uh, green, yellow, red, default choice. And then existing group, we're going to put it in my SP questions. So we want to put these all together. And this is for organization. This is just a best, best practice. And now we'll do work number my SharePoint questions okay 
Now I'm going to create one that's only in our software uh, form. So how about UAT user acceptance testing. So this is only in our software project and it's going to have a couple choices. It's going to say um, not complete testing complete or not started not started testing complete and we'll default value to not started and we want to make sure that column is also in our group so then we're gonna give them also we'll say customer support this is another column for our software projects and we'll just say um, choice put it in our group we'll say uh, true or false some people like to do you know the check boxes uh, for yes or no I, I really don't like the checkbox that's just me being you know picky um, I'll say true or false put it in my group default value is true okay now let's do a column that's in only our regular projects that's not in our software projects so this will be something like deliverables and we'll leave it as a multi-line text and this will be in my SharePoint questions group. All right, so deliverables, that's only in our regular project. And I'll create a few more. I'm just going to make some things up. We'll do like assumptions. Um, I'll just think of some things, the existing group, and I'll do these pretty quickly. Maybe one more benefits, just so we can see the difference. All right, so we have now created our site column. Let's go to site settings, site content types. Now we're gonna create a new content type. And this is going to be, we'll call it regular projects. You could call it projects if you wanted, just whatever you want. Um, we're gonna create a new category just so we can see that. My SharePoint questions. And the parent category, now I'm not going to go into all the details about this. I'm just going to show you what we're doing for this scenario. So we're going to do a list content type. We're going to be doing this in a list. And the type is going to be item. So it's going to be a list content type of content type item. And we're going to create. All right, so now it wants us to add the site columns, right? So we're just going to add from existing site columns. And our categories, this is where our organization comes in. We're going to say actual work was part of them. Assumptions, benefits, customer support was not. That's our software projects, deliverables, project phase, project status, and work. So these two columns are going to be for our software project type. And I'm going to hit save. And then we're going to do it again. So we'll go back to our content type gallery. We'll create another one. And this one's going to be software projects. And the group is going to be my SharePoint questions. And once again, we're going to do list and item. So list content type with an item. Now for this content type, we're going to add our site columns. Add from existing. We have our category here. And we're going to do actual work, no assumptions, no benefits, customer support, no deliverables, phase, status, user acceptance testings, and work. All right, so these three columns are in our regular project, and on the right side are the ones we're going to use in our software project. And we're going to hit save. And now, let's go back to SharePoint. All right, we're back to our SharePoint list. Let's associate these content types to our SharePoint list. So I'm going to go to settings, list settings, and then here in advanced settings, we're going to allow the management of content types. And I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to click OK. Now you'll notice that a new section has appeared here, and this is our content type section. We're going to add existing site content types. And right here, we're going to select our groups, and right so we, we created this my SharePoint questions we have two different ones regular projects and software projects 
we'll click OK. We'll go back to our project list. And now, when I hit the new button, we have item, regular project, software project. So let me go back and I'm going to remove item. So item, actually, we're going to delete this content type. So now we're left with just two different types of content types. Regular projects. When we pull up regular projects, we have our title, actual work, assumptions, benefits, deliverables, phase, project status. When we choose software projects, we have different fields. Title, actual work, customer support, uh, you know, project phase, status, and the user acceptance testing. And we have two different forms and one list. So now let's add these columns to our, our view. So when we create a new view, we're going to create view and we're going to start from an existing view, all items, and that's going to bring our title in. And then this will be regular projects. And we're going to bring in actual work, benefits, assumptions, deliverables, project phase, project status, and work. I may have forgotten one, but that's fine. And then on our filter, we're going to set up when our content type is equal to regular projects. All right, so we have uh, all items and regular projects. And let's do all items real quick. So list settings, all items. We want to just pull in the things, the columns that were on both types of projects. So that's actual work, uh, project phase, project status, work. And I may have forgot one, but, but that's fine. We just want to see, you know, mainly what we really want to see is project phase and project status, right? So we'll say OK. And we're going to create one more view. And this one is going to be just like regular projects except for it's going to be software projects and we'll turn off assumptions benefits deliverables and there's two columns that were different that was UAT and customer support and then down here in the filter when it's equal to software projects alright so we have regular projects software projects let's create a regular project this is a regular project. The actual work is 130. These are my assumptions. Project phase, we'll, we'll say it's in build already and it's green and work is uh, 50. We'll hit save. All right, so I'm going to go back to all items. So we have a, a regular project, right? Let's create another one. Let's do software project. Inter, uh, title, uh, this is a software project. Actual work, uh, 400. Um, well, we're in the run phase. Testing, uh, 300, and we'll hit save. So now, let me pull, um, you can see we have both types of project. We have a regular project and a software project. Regular projects, it will only show those. For a software project, it will only show those. And you can see that the extra columns are now being shown here. And so finally, I, I think we just need one more thing in our all items view. I think we need to turn on content types in the view. And I'll make this uh, number one. It's going to be first on our list. So now we can see we have two different types of content types. We have regular projects and software projects. We can see the project phase. We can see the project status, actual work and work. And if we really want to get into the details, we can go to uh, regular projects and see different fields than we would if we saw in the software projects. 
Now I know this was very technical and I went very fast. I really think that if you can see all your projects with the related fields between the two in one view, it's way more powerful than seeing it in two views. Of course you could run Power BI and you know uh, combine the two lists, but from SharePoint side, we can see both projects. They each have different fields. Some of the fields interlap, some of them don't. And we have two different forms, regular projects and software projects. So I thought I would touch more on SharePoint. I know this was a, an advanced feature that not a lot of people actually do or, or take advantage of, but I do think this could help your SharePoint development in the future. So thank you for watching. This is my SharePoint questions. I'll see you next time.